the Lord be with you. Back in 1981, the attention of the world was focused on the wedding of Prince Charles and Lady Diana. I remember a newspaper report in which the reporter described the arrival of the entourage to the cathedral where the wedding was to take place. This reporter described how all the members of the royal family were carried in special royal coaches to the cathedral while Lady Diana arrived in the coach of a commoner. Then came this rather telling sentence in the newspaper account. Lady Diana came to the church as a commoner. She departed as royalty. For all of us who call ourselves Christian, who love Jesus, isn't this exactly what happened to us? Isn't this a beautiful description of what grace is all about? We come as sinners, but grace turns us into heirs and joint heirs with Christ of all that God wants to give us. Isn't this a beautiful description of the possibility that comes to, a, to us each and every day? Once we were strangers, not understanding how near the Lord always is to us. Now we wake each day knowing we are royalty, known to the King of Kings by name, walking with him as he walks with us. On Mother's Day, I have always been impressed with the perseverance of moms, especially single mothers. I had a single mom in one of my churches who got up at 5.30 each morning and got herself ready for work. She dressed her sleepy children. She fixed them breakfast. She dropped them off at daycare and at school. She fought the morning traffic. She hunted for a parking space. She grabbed a cup of coffee. And that is just what she did before finally sitting in her chair to do her job. She worked hard to make enough money for her struggling family. Oh, and did I mention that she also made time to take her daughter to flute lessons and her son to t-ball practice. What made her do it? Jesus dined with Pharisees. He shocked people by going home with Zacchaeus. He shocked them even more by paying attention to an adulteress. Jesus told stories about farmers and fishermen and weddings and gardens and the birds of the air. In other words, common things. Jesus was always going out to seek and even to serve those who did not yet know that they are children of God and so loved. What made Jesus do it? Bishop Fulton J. Sheen once asked a missionary from one of the islands of the Pacific, which was the greatest virtue of the people he helped there. The missionary answered, I can tell you their greatest virtue in terms of what they regard as their greatest vice, namely Kai Po, which is the sin of of eating alone. According to the missionary, some of the people would go without food for two or even three days until they could find someone with whom they could share the blessings of their meal. Going without food for two or three days? What made them do it? Compare these stories to that of a certain matron 
in society who took a course in first aid. A few days after completing the course, she was an on-the-spot witness to a very bad car accident. Occupants of the car had been thrown out of the car by the impact, and they lay seriously wounded on the street. Later, describing the accident to a friend, the matron said, It was awful, just awful, and it happened so fast and right there in front of me. Tires squealed, brakes screeched, and all of a sudden there was a grinding crash. The next thing I knew, people were lying in the street bleeding and moaning. What happened next, a friend asked excitedly. At first, I hardly knew what to do, the woman continued. Then I remembered what they taught us in first class, first aid class. Immediately, I put my head down between my knees so I would not faint. The Bible makes it very clear. You and I have a choice to make. We must choose between living selfishly and laying down our lives. Good moms give us such beautiful examples of what it means to lay down our lives for someone we love, not by dying for them, although some have, but by living for them, devoting themselves completely to the ones they love. Thank you, moms. You show us what it means to arrive as commoners, but to be treated as royalty by your grace and love. Amen.